Do you want to play jazz piano, but you don't have a clear roadmap of what to practice? Well, in today's lesson, I'm going to show you exactly what to practice so that you're no longer confused about how to reach your piano goals. You'll learn the five pillars of jazz that you should practice every day, a clear outline for what to practice for the next 12 months, the exact exercises that you should be practicing for your playing level, how to know when you've passed each exercise, and my top tips and tricks to excel your learning. And if you go through this practice plan for the next year, I promise you'll see massive results in your jazz piano playing. So let's go ahead and dive into the lesson. So we're going to go through each of these five pillars and I'm going to show you exactly what to practice for your playing level. So you're going to learn a beginner level, an intermediate level, and an advanced level. Now if you're not sure which level you're at, I do encourage you to watch all three of the levels so that you can decide for yourself which level is most appropriate for you. All right, the five pillars to becoming a well-rounded jazz pianist are scales, chords, voicings, lead sheets, and improvisation. And as you focus on these five pillars, you'll also enhance your skills in other areas like technique, rhythm, ear training, sight reading, accompaniment, composition, and a bunch of other areas. All right, pillar number one is scales. And whether you wanna play the blues, Okay, or more traditional jazz. Okay, it all starts with learning scales because scales are what give you the harmonic language of jazz tunes. So all of the chords and jazz tunes and all of the melodies come from these parent scales. And so if you learn the scales, you're gonna have a much easier time playing jazz. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. So if you're a beginner pianist, what should you practice when it comes to scales? Well, the most important scale for you to learn is your major and minor scales. And you might already know your major scale in the key of C, it's all white notes. But if you have a teacher that's told you to practice it like this, this is not what I recommend. There's actually a much better exercise to practicing your major and minor scales that will help you become a jazz pianist. By the way, I wanted to mention that the lesson sheet music is downloadable and printable. You can also change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to that below. Here's how the exercise goes. It actually sounds really cool. This is an amazing exercise because you're not only learning the notes of the scale and building your technique, but you're also learning all of the chords that come from the scale. You're learning how to swing your right hand, which is really important in jazz, and you're practicing one of the most important rhythms in jazz called the Charleston. So for the exercise, you're basically coming up the C scale, and then you're going to the next chord, the D minor on the F, and then you're gonna come down on the E minor. And then on the F, you're gonna to go to an F chord. Does that make sense? And then you're gonna do a little crossover B, and then you're gonna play the same exercise, but continue your chords in the left hand. So G, A, right? And then B. And then on the F, you go to your C chord. Then you play the same thing, but this time you're gonna go down with your chords. So we have B, and then A, G, you see that? Here's a little crossover to the F. Here's the E chord, okay? And then the D chord, and the C with the F. In addition to your major scale, you also wanna make sure you can play your minor scale. Because in jazz, you use a lot of minor scales when you're soloing. Okay, it's a very important scale to learn. So your minor scale is actually very simple. You start with the major scale, you lower the third note, you lower the sixth note, and you lower the seventh note, and you have what's called a C natural minor scale. But again, I don't recommend that you practice it like this 
because you're just working on your technique. Instead, it's much better to play this exercise. And once again, with this exercise, you're not only mastering your minor scale, the fingering, and your technique, but you're also learning all of the chords that come from your natural minor scale. And this is very important if you want to play jazz, because remember, the chords in jazz come from your scales. Now, when it comes to practicing your major and minor scales, I recommend that you focus on one key each month. So for the first month, you'll focus on the C major and the C minor scales. I recommend five to 10 minutes of practice each day, and your goal tempo is 80 beats per minute. Now, once you've reached your goal tempo and you've practiced for the month, then in your next month, I recommend that you focus on a new key. So you can try a key like F, and practice your major scale, right? And then your minor scale, until you reach your goal of 80 beats per minute. And if you do one key each month, then by the end of the year, you will have covered all 12 of your major and minor scales. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on your major scales and you wanna learn them in all 12 keys with the best fingering and exercises to master your scales, plus all of the chords that come from your scales and how to use them in tunes, check out our Beginner Foundations learning track. In this learning track, you learn everything that you need to know about your major scales and mastering them, playing them in different keys, and playing really fun tunes that use these scales. You'll also learn about ear training and hand coordination, so I'll put a link to this learning track below. All right, if you are an intermediate level pianist and you wanna play jazz with confidence, then you need to practice your scales, but I'm assuming that you already know your major and your minor scales. If you don't, then you definitely wanna do the beginner exercise. So if you're on the intermediate side, the best scales for you to practice are your modes. And your modes are the scales that you use on particular types of chords. Like if you have a C minor seven chord, you can use a scale called your Dorian scale. Okay. Or if you have a chord like a C7, you can use your C mixolydian scale. This is why the modes are important, because you can take different chords and use different modes to solo over them. So quick review on your modes. If you play a C major scale starting on C, we call this C Ionian. And then if you play the same scale starting on D, we call this D Dorian, and E Phrygian, and F Lydian, and G Mixolydian, and A Aeolian, and finally B Locrian. Now this is a great way to get started learning your modes, but a better way of understanding your modes is by which notes you alter of your major scale. So if you play your C major scale and you lower the seventh, you have your C Mixolydian scale. And if you lower the third, now you have the C Dorian scale. And we have C Aeolian. And then we have C Phrygian. And then you have C Locrian. And then finally, if you take your C major scale and you just raise the four, you have what's called C Lydian. And so you wanna practice each of these seven modes if you wanna be comfortable soloing in jazz. So I'll play the exercise for you and then break it down. So we're gonna come up the scale C Ionian. Notice we have a C major seven in our left hand to match the scale. Then we're gonna add one flat coming down for C mixolydian. Here's the B flat, okay? We'll do a little connector here on the B flat. Now we're gonna add another flat, our E flat, making it C Dorian. Notice we use a C minor seven in our left hand, and we're gonna add another flat, making this C Aeolian. Okay. Now we're gonna add another flat, the D flat, making this C Phrygian. And then we're gonna go Locrian coming down with the G flat, and we're gonna match the chord here. 
okay? And finally, we're gonna end with C Lydian with that F sharp, and we finish coming down. This is a great exercise because it makes you really understand your modes for each key and also switching between your modes very quickly, which is something that jazz musicians do when they're soloing. Now I recommend that you practice this exercise for one month, focusing on the key of C major. I recommend that you play this for five to 10 minutes per day, and I want you to reach a goal tempo of 100 BPM. Once you've done all of this, then in the next month, I recommend that you focus on a new key. So you can go to the key of G major, and then practice all of your seven modes using the same exercise. This way, by the end of 12 months, you will have mastered all of your seven modes for all 12 keys. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on mastering your musical modes, we have some really good courses on each of the most common musical modes, including your Dorian mode, your Aeolian mode, Mixolydian, Lydian modes. So I'll put a link to those courses below. All right, if you're an advanced pianist and you wanna master your scales to play jazz, some of the best scales to use are what are called altered scales. And when you listen to a jazz pianist, you might hear them play a phrase like this. What are those cool scales that I'm playing? Well, they're called altered scales, and there are three altered scales that you really need to know if you're an advanced jazz pianist. And they are the whole tone scale, which is basically all whole steps, the dominant diminished scale, which is a half step whole step scale, it's kind of a strange looking scale, and then finally, your altered scale, which is a lot like your dominant diminished scale, except we're gonna put an A flat in there on the top. And these scales sound amazing when you use them to improvise over a dominant seven chord. For example, I can take each one of these scales and play them over a C7 and it'll sound really cool. Like here's the whole tone scale. Here's the dominant diminished scale. Here's the fully altered scale. So here's the exercise that I recommend you practice to master these scales. I'll play it for you and then break it down. So what I'm doing is I'm playing each one of these altered scales coming up on the C7 chord, and then I'm resolving to an F major chord using the F major scale. So for the first one, we use C altered. That's that whole tone scale. I'm gonna come down and then end with a little line on F. Okay, and then we do the same thing, this time using dominant diminished slightly different, and then end with the same line on the F, okay? And then finally, we're gonna use the C fully altered scale, slightly different, and then end with the same line. Now I recommend that you practice this for one month in one key. So practice on all of your C altered scales. I do encourage you to practice this for maybe five to 10 minutes per day. And a goal tempo is 110 BPM. So once you've hit that goal tempo, you've practiced it for one month, then in the next month, pick a new key. So you might go to a different key, maybe the key of B flat. Okay, well what's the five chord in B flat? It's an F7, so you practice your F altered scales, resolving to B flat. By the way, if you wanna learn all of the scales that I like to use when I'm soloing over different types of chords, we have a really great course on this topic called Scales for Improv on Seventh Chords. I'll put a link to that below. All right, pillar two to playing jazz piano is to master your chords. And if you're a beginner pianist and you wanna play cool jazzy chords like this, well, guess what? All of the chords that we use 
okay, in jazz, they come from major and minor chords. And if you can't play your major and minor chords, then you won't be able to play some of these other jazzier sounding chords. Now your yearly goal is to be able to play all 12 of your major chords, minor chords, and chord inversions. And if you listen to most teachers, they'll say, okay, here's a C major chord, and then you have these inversions. So this is called first inversion, and then this is called second inversion. And then if you play minor chords, you have C minor, root position, and then you have first inversion, and then second inversion. And this is a great way to get started with inversion but I don't think it's the best way to practice them if you want to play jazz. It's much better to practice them like this. Okay. Doesn't it sound so much more interesting? And you're not only learning your inversions, but you're swinging the notes in your right hand and you're playing them over different chords in your left hand. So it sounds a lot better. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just playing each inversion I'm playing a little Charleston rhythm in the left hand, and then I go to the next inversion, Charleston rhythm, and I finish, okay? And then I play the same thing coming down. You see that? And then you can do the same thing for minor. Okay, same rhythm, one and two and three and four. And then you bring it down, right? Same thing. So I recommend that you focus on one key for one month. So in month number one, focus on the key of C major. I recommend that you practice this five to 10 minutes per day. And you really wanna hit a goal tempo of 90 beats per minute. Once you've practiced this for one month and you've hit your goal tempo, then in the next month, you can try a new key. So you can jump to the key of D and practice the same thing. And after you do this for 12 months, you will have learned all of your major and minor chords in all inversions in all 12 keys. All right, if you're an intermediate level pianist and you wanna master your chords to play jazz, the most important chords in jazz, and I mean like 99% of jazz tunes use a chord type called seventh chords. And it really doesn't matter the tune if you're doing, you know, Fly Me to the Moon, the way you look tonight, if you look at the lead sheets and you look at the chords, you're gonna see all of these seventh chords. And so if you wanna play jazz, you really need to understand seventh chords. Now there are five types of seventh chords that you're gonna see 99% of the time. You have what's called a C major seven, you have a C dominant seven, you have a C minor seven, you have a C half diminished seven, and you have a C diminished seven. And there's a really good exercise that will help you master each of these seventh chords. It's called the inverted sevenths exercise, and it sounds like this. Basically, I'm starting on a C major seven chord, and I'm going down in fifths. So I'm gonna go to C to F, and play an F major seven. You see that? And this is an inverted F major seven. And then down from F a fifth to B flat, I play B flat major seven, and then B flat to E flat, I play an E flat major seven. And you continue this cycle. So next is A flat major seven, to a D flat major seven, G flat major seven, B major seven. You're basically going around your circle of fifths, is your A major seven, D major seven, finally down to G major seven. Now I recommend that you practice this for five to 10 minutes per day and you set a goal tempo of 100 BPM. And each month I recommend that you focus on one type of chord. So in the first month, you're gonna do your major seven chords. And then in the next month, you can do your dominant seven chords. Does that make sense? And then in the next month, you could do your minor seven chords. So this is gonna take you five months to master. Now in months six through 11, there's another really good exercise that you can practice to master your seventh chords, and it goes like this.
For this exercise, I'm practicing all of my seventh chords, but I'm playing all of the diatonic seventh chords that belong to a key. And so this is another way to practice each of your seventh chords is to mix them up. So we have C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven. And so you can practice these all the way up the scale. And then the other thing that I do is I break the right hand up in triplets. Triple, 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 triple. You see what I'm doing? Okay. And then I also do a Charleston rhythm in my left hand. One, two, three, four. Now I recommend that you practice this for five to 10 minutes per day with a goal tempo of 150 BPM. Now, if you practice two keys per month, then after six months, you will have practiced all 12 of your diatonic seventh chords in all of your keys. Once you've practiced this exercise, then you'll have one more month where you can review both of your exercises. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on seventh chords and really master them, check out our level four foundations learning track. In this learning track, we have full length courses where you'll learn how to master each type of seventh chords. You'll learn essential exercises, how to apply them to tunes. We have a really great lead sheet course where you learn how to use seventh chords on lead sheets, lots of exercises over the two, five, one chord progression. Plus you can learn how to start identifying seventh chords by ear with our ear training courses. So I'll put a link to that learning track below. All right, if you're an advanced pianist and you wanna play beautiful jazz chords like this. then you must understand chord extensions and chord alterations. Extensions and alterations are basically the notes that you can add to simple chords like this to make them sound like that. And there are some simple rules to extensions and alterations that will make them much easier to understand. Basically, if you have a major seven chord or a minor seven chord, you can add three different extensions to these chords, the D, the F, and the A. We call these the 9, the 11, and the 13. Now, if you have a dominant 7 chord, like a C7, there are four alterations that you can add to this chord, which are called the flat 9, the sharp 9, the sharp 11, and the flat 13. Now, as a quick side note, on major 7 chords, typically you won't add the 11 in, and on minor 7 chords, you typically will not add the 13. So what you wanna do is you wanna practice playing chord progressions using extensions and alterations. And so here's the exercise that I love to use with my students. I'll play it for you and then break it down. I'm basically playing a two, five, one chord progression in the key of F, but instead of playing ordinary seventh chords like this, I'm gonna add every possible chord extension to each of these chords. So for the first one, that G minor seven, I'm adding the ninth and the 11th. Then on the C7, I'm adding some chord alterations, okay? These are basically all of the alter notes I could add on a C7 chord and then I resolve to my F chord, but again, I'm adding all of the possible chord extensions. So I have the 13 here, and then I have the nine. Then I'm gonna shift the same thing up. So instead of starting on the C, I'm gonna start on the F and do the same thing. So we have G minor 11, and then C7, there are my alter notes, alter notes, and I resolve once again to my F chord. So I'm playing the same chords, I'm just moving it up to explore different inversions of these chords. And then finally, you can bring it up again, okay? G minor 11 here, C7, there are my alter notes, and I end on my F major 13. Just like with the other exercises, I recommend that you focus on one key per month. You can practice this for five to 10 minutes per day. And I recommend that you set a goal tempo of 75 BPM. Once you've hit your goal tempo and you've practiced it for a month, then in the next month, pick a new key. So you might go to the key of E flat and practice your two, five, one 
and E flat. And by the end of 12 months, you will have practiced adding your chord extensions and alterations to all 12 of your keys using the most common jazz progression, which is your 251. By the way, if you want to do a deep dive on chord extensions and chord alterations, then I recommend that you check out our level five foundations learning track. In this learning track, you'll learn all about extensions and alterations and specifically how to apply them to basically every type of chord. You'll learn how to combine notes, the best voicings, how to use them in chord progressions, in lead sheets. You'll also learn about hand coordination, plus how to add passing chords and reharmonize basically any chord progression so I'll put a link to that learning track below. All right, pillar three of playing jazz piano is mastering your chords. And if you're a beginner jazz pianist, you might be thinking, you know, Johnny, I don't think I can learn jazz chords. There is way too much going on. But you might not know that you can actually get started playing jazz chords by using some very simple chords called chord shells. And they're super easy to play. So a chord shell is basically when you take a jazz chord, like a major seventh chord, and you remove one or two notes from the chord. Usually you remove the fifth from the chord, the G, and you end up with this partial chord or a chord shell. Now there are two ways to play chord shells. One is to play the root and the third on the bottom, and the right hand plays the seventh. Okay, this is called a closed position chord shell because it's contained within an octave. The other way to play a chord shell is to play the root with your left hand and play the seventh and the third with your right hand. You get this beautiful chord. This is called an open chord shell because the outer notes are further than one octave apart. And so you can do this on each type of chord, like on a C7 chord. You could play your chord shell using a closed position chord or an open position chord. Or a C minor seven, okay, same thing. You can play a closed position chord like this or an open position chord. So there's a really good exercise to help you master your chord shells and it goes like this. I'm basically playing a 2-5-1 chord progression in the key of C major. So I'm starting on a 2 chord, then going into a 5 chord, and then a 1 chord. And I'm using these 7th chords that we oftentimes play in jazz. But instead of playing these ordinary chords, I'm playing them as chord shells. So for the first chord, I'm playing my D minor 7 chord shell. Then for the G chord, check it out. I play it like this. This is that open position, G7, kind of spreading the notes out, and then I end on my C major seven chord. Isn't that beautiful? And then you can do your open position, two, five, one. So I can start up here on my D minor seven. Notice I'm spreading the notes out from the original chord. Then my G7, there it is. Kind of looks like a root position chord. And then on my C major seven, I end here, and once again, this is that open position C major seven chord. Now I recommend that you practice this for five to 10 minutes per day with a goal tempo of 150 BPM, and I recommend that you focus on one key per month. So in this case, you're focused on the key of C major. Once you've practiced this for one month, then in the next month, go to a new key and practice your 251 in that key using your chord shells. And by the end of 12 months, you will have practiced all of your chord shells in all 12 keys. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on chord shells, we have two really good courses on these topics, including our chord shell and guide tones exercises course and our play piano lead sheets with shells and guide tones. And in these courses, you'll learn how to master these chord shells, how to use them in tunes. So I'll put a link to those below. All right, if you're an intermediate level pianist and you wanna master your jazz chords, there are a lot of different chords that you're gonna play in jazz, but one of the most important important types that you'll play at an intermediate level are what are called rootless voicings. And they sound like this. They are these beautiful crunchy chords that you use when you're accompanying jazz. And you can even use them in the left hand for a melody.
You hear those crunchy chords? Those are rootless voicing chords. Now there are two types of chords for rootless voicings. There are A voicing chords and B voicing chords. So on a C major seven, if you add the ninth to this chord and get rid of the root, you have your A voicing. It is a rootless voicing chord, so there's no root in the chord. Now if you put the seventh on the bottom, you have what's called the B voicing. So A voicing, B voicing. You can do this on your other chord types as well, like your C minor seven. If you put a nine on the top and you get rid of the root, you have your A voicing for a C minor. And if you put the seventh on the bottom, you have your B voicing. Same with your dominant chords, like a C7. If you add a nine on the top and you substitute the fifth for the 13, and you get rid of the root, you have a beautiful chord called a C13. And if you put the root on the bottom, it sounds really nice. So this is your A voicing for a dominant chord. And then if you put the seventh on the bottom, you end up with your B voicing, okay? This is a C13. It's a very jazzy way of playing a C7 chord. So there's a great exercise to mastering your rootless voicing chords, and it goes like this. So basically I'm playing a two, five, one chord progression in the key of C. Remember, this is the most common chord progression in jazz. And then I'm gonna play my rootless voicings on the two, five, one. So on the D minor seven, I'm gonna play that A voicing on the D. Then on the G, ooh, I'm gonna play a B voicing on that G seven. Remember the B voicing looks like this, okay? One, three, five, seven, nine. You put the 13 instead of the five and get rid of the root. That's your G chord, that's a B voicing. And then my A voicing on my C chord. And then I'm gonna use a little six chord there as a substitute, okay? So that's the full chord progression. Two, five, one, one. And then I'm gonna play the same exercise, but I'm gonna start on a B voicing on the D. So we have a two, five. It's the same chord as this one, but it's an A voicing, and then one is a B voicing, and one. The other really good exercise is to practice your rootless voicings in your left hand. And so a great way to do this is to mix it with your scale. Okay, basically I'm playing the two, five, one, starting with a B voicing, playing the C scale coming up, and then here's my G chord, okay, and then my one chord C, and then my six chord on the C. And then you're gonna bring it down. So you're starting on an A voicing on the D. There's your B voicing on the G. A voicing on the C to your C6 chord. Now I recommend that you practice both of these exercises, right? And then the scale. Right? and do them in one key per month. So you're gonna focus on the key of C major. I recommend that you practice this for five to 10 minutes per day, and that you set a goal tempo of 140 BPM. Once you've practiced this for a month and you've hit your goal tempo, then I recommend that you move on to another key. And by the end of the year, you will have practiced all of your rootless voicings in all 12 keys. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on rootless voicing chords, I recommend that you check out our level six foundations learning track. In this learning track, you'll learn everything that you need to know to master rootless voicing chords. And we have full length courses on each chord. So major seven chords, minor seven chords, dominant seven chords, half diminished chords, altered chords. How do you play rootless voicings on each of these chords? We also show you how to use rootless voicings in chord progressions, like your two, five, one chord progression, and how to use rootless voicings in lead sheets. So I'll put a link to that learning track below. All right, if you're an advanced pianist and you wanna master your jazz chords, I think the most important chords for you to learn are called quartal voicings, and they sound like this.
a quartal voicing is basically a chord that is stacked in primarily fourth intervals. So instead of a chord being stacked in thirds, like we're traditionally taught, you end up with these chords that have lots of fourth intervals in them, and they have a very cool jazzy sound to them. So as an example, instead of C major like this, you'd play it E, A, D, G, and C all fourth intervals, okay? Instead of a C minor chord like this, like a C minor seven, you'd play it like this. Ooh, all fourth intervals. And we're adding some notes to these chords, like chord extensions and chord alterations. Finally, on a dominant chord like this, if you wanna play a quartal voicing, you could play it like this, okay? Fourth interval, fourth interval, fourth interval. The best way to practice your quartal chords are to harmonize each of the notes of your scale using a quartal voicing. So for example, let's say you wanted to harmonize a C major seven chord and you wanted to be able to use any melody note of the C major scale. Well, here's how you would harmonize it. For the first note of the scale, we play all fourth intervals down and you have a beautiful chord called a C6-9. Okay, the next one, we play it like this. Okay, fourth, fourth, and a fourth. Okay, it's a C6-9, then like this. Okay, fourth, fourth, fourth. Okay, for the F, you're gonna harmonize it like a D minor 11. Okay, a little bit different. And then on the fifth, you're gonna harmonize it like this. Fourth, fourth, fourth. Then on the sixth, you're gonna harmonize it like this. Lots of fourth intervals. Okay, and then on the seventh, we're gonna harmonize it like this. Fourth, fourth, fourth. Okay, beautiful. So the full scale. What about a minor seven chord, like a C minor seven? How would you harmonize each of these notes using quartal chords? Well, most melodies on a minor seven chord use notes from the C Dorian scale. So you wanna be able to harmonize any one of these seven notes using quartal chords. So for the first melody note, the C, we're gonna play it like this. This is called a C minor 11. Then for the next one, we just move the top note up. Then for the third, the E flat, we're gonna play it like this, okay? All fourth intervals, really nice sound. Then for the F, we're gonna play it like this, fourth, fourth, fourth. Then the G, ooh, really pretty, fourth, fourth, fourth. The A, we're gonna harmonize as a D minor 11, so we're gonna just change the chord a little bit because it harmonizes better. Then the seven, harmonize like this, fourth, 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 okay? This is a C minor 11 chord, and finally, same chord that we started with. For dominant seven chords, I recommend that you use your C mixolydian scale, and so you're gonna harmonize each note of the scale like this, starting from the C, lots of fourth intervals, fourth, fourth, fourth. By the way, this is an augmented fourth, okay? Next one, top three notes move up. Next one, a little different here, fourth, 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 a little crunch on the top. Harmonize the next one as a D minor 11. Then the next one, okay, move this back up. Again, all fourths, you do have this augmented fourth. Top note moves up. Then on the seventh, we play it like this and finally move the top note up for the last chord. So I recommend that you practice these three exercises in one key each month. So in month number one, focus on the key of C major, first on your major seven chord, minor seven chord, and dominant seven chord. I recommend that you practice this for five to 10 minutes per day with a goal tempo of 70 BPM. And once you've hit this goal tempo and you've practiced it for a month, then in the next month, move on to a new key. And so by the end of the year, you will have practiced all of these quartal voicing chords in all 12 of your keys. By the way, if you want to do a deep dive on quartal voicings, I recommend that you check out our level nine foundations learning track. In this learning track, you'll learn everything that you need to know about quartal voicings and how to master them on each chord type, like major chords, minor chords, dominant chords, your half diminished and your diminished chords. You'll learn essential exercises over the most common chord progressions, plus how to use quartal voicings on lead sheets. So I'll put a link to 
that learning track below. All right, the fourth pillar of becoming a well-rounded jazz pianist is to be able to play lead sheets. And lead sheets are basically the raw material that jazz musicians use to basically play beautiful arrangements of jazz tunes. When I was just playing that, all that I knew were the basic melody and basic chords, and from there, I was making it my own. I was adding all of these additional notes and cool rhythms. And so this is what jazz musicians do. They take a basic melody and chords, and they jazz it up. They make it their own. So if you're a beginner jazz pianist, how do you play a lead sheet and make it sound good? Well, a really great approach if you're a beginner jazz pianist is to use chord shells to play jazz standards. And so if you take the tune after you've gone, The chords are actually really simple, but you don't want to play them in this really ordinary way. If you're a beginner, you might want to play it like this. So what I'm basically doing is instead of playing the basic chords and the melody like this, I'm just using chord shells, meaning I'm getting rid of the fifth of the chord, and then I'm spreading these notes out underneath the melody, okay? So we have, okay, that's my F major chord, my F major seven, and then instead of F6 like this, I spread it out, I have, Here's my melody, isn't that beautiful? And then my C major seven, it's spread out like this. These are chord shells, and then we have, okay, it's my A seven, and then D seven. Okay, there's my D seven, I'm just spreading the notes out. Okay, these are those open voicings. And then it's my G seven chord shell, so there's no fifth in the chord. And then my C major seven, okay, is my C major seven spread out. I've got the third up here. And then my C seven, again, it's a spread out C seven chord, chord shell. Now I recommend that you focus on learning one new song per month and you can find new tunes in a fake book, go through your chords, make sure you can play the basic chords and then practice spreading your notes out to use these beautiful chord shells. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on playing lead sheets, I encourage you to check out our most comprehensive course on playing lead sheets, which is our Autumn Leaves course. This is a beginner to intermediate level course where you'll learn everything that you need to know about taking a basic lead sheet and turning it into a beautiful jazz standard, how to walk bass lines, how to color your chords, how to solo over the tune. So I'll put a link to that course course below. All right, if you're on the intermediate side and you want to master playing lead sheets, I recommend that you use rootless voicings to play tunes. And so rootless voicings sound like this. I'm basically jumping up to each of the rootless voicings that I taught you earlier. So this is an F major nine B voicing, okay? F minor six, that's a B voicing. And then C major seven, that's an A voicing. Ooh, very cool chord. This is an A 13, that's a B voicing. That's an A voicing, I have the third on the bottom. G13 B voicing, and then that's a A voicing on a C major nine. Okay, there's my C13 A voicing. Now I recommend that you focus on learning one new tune each month, and you can find lots of great tunes by opening up a fake book. All right, if you're an advanced pianist and you want to master playing lead sheets, then I recommend that you focus on walking bass lines and playing block chords in the right hand, and it sounds like this. So what 
I'm doing is I'm basically walking a bass line on each of my chords, and then in my right hand, I'm grabbing some chord tones, okay, and then I'm hitting what are called block chords. And a block chord is a four or five note chord where you harmonize the melody and you keep all of the notes within an octave, okay? So we have, and then on the F, notice I'm grabbing those block chords, and then on the C chord, Okay, another block chord, and then, okay, I'm not grabbing block chords the entire time, especially when the melody is really busy. Okay, on the D chord, okay, two block chords there, okay, and then on the G chord, see that? Block chords, and then, There's my block chord. I recommend that you focus on learning one new tune each month using this technique of walking bass lines and the right hand block chords. And then you can open a fake book and in the next month, pick a new tune to practice this technique on. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on playing lead sheets at an advanced level, we have a really good course on this topic, which is our Fly Me to the Moon course, where you'll learn how to take a basic lead sheet and turn it into a really hip jazz arrangement, how to walk bass lines, how to solo, how to add beautiful chords to the arrangement, so I'll put a link to that below. All right, the fifth pillar of being a great jazz pianist is having the ability to solo or to improvise. And oftentimes you have a chord progression and you just wanna play a little solo on it. Now, if you're more on the beginner side, you might see that and think, Johnny, there's no way I can do that. Only advanced pianists can solo at the piano. But that couldn't be further from the truth. You can be a beginner pianist and solo, and it can still sound really nice. In fact, if you're a beginner, I only recommend that you use one scale to get started soloing, and you might be surprised to know that it's actually the major scale. And you can create some really cool lines using only these seven white notes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna practice improvising over the two, five, one chord progression in the key of C. It's the most common jazz progression. So if you practice improvising over this progression, you're gonna have a much better time soloing on actual tunes, okay? D minor, G7, C major seven. And in the right hand, you're gonna use the notes from the C major scale. Does that make sense? Now when you're improvising, you wanna play short little lines or phrases. Notice how I put little gaps in between each line. But my lines are actually not random. What I'm doing is anytime I end a line, I try to target one of my chord tones. So on my D minor seven chord, when I play a line, I might try to target the third of this chord. You see that? And I end on the F, okay? And you can do this on each of your chords. So on the G chord, the third is the B. So I might play this line and I end on the B. Doesn't that sound nice? And then on the C chord, my third is an E. So I might target this E in my line. There it is. And then again. Doesn't that sound nice? You can also practice targeting your fifth of each chord, okay? So you can play lines like this. Sounds nice. I'm ending on my A. And then on my G, my fifth is the D. So I might play this. See that? I end on my D, okay? Then on my next chord, the C major seven, I might target my G. How about a longer line? How about this? Ooh. See how I end on my G there? You can also target your roots. Like on the D chord, I could target my D in my line. See that line? I'm landing on the D, and then same thing on the G. What's my root? It's a G, so I could play this. 
C and land on the G. And then same on the C chord. I could target my root when I improvise my line. So I could play something like this. Okay, you hear that? And then twice on the C. So I recommend that you practice these exercises for five to 10 minutes per day, and that you set a goal tempo of 100 BPM, and focus on one key per month. So you're gonna practice improvising in the key of C major for one month, and once you reach your goal tempo, and you've done this for one month, then in the next month, move on to a new key and practice improvising in that key. And by the end of 12 months, you will have practiced improvising in all 12 keys. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on the topic of soloing using chord tone targets, we have a really great full length course on this called 251 Soloing with Chord Tone Targets. I'll put a link to that below. All right, if you're an intermediate level pianist and you wanna solo playing jazz piano, one of the most important techniques is called the upper and lower neighbor technique, and it sounds like this. Notice how occasionally I'm adding some of these black notes to my right hand solo, and it adds some really cool colors to my right hand solo. Well, these are the upper and lower neighbors. So here's how it works. Basically, if you take a chord like a C major seven, each one of these notes from the chord has a lower neighbor, which is the note a half step below each of these notes. So the lower neighbor to C is the B, the lower neighbor to E is E flat, the lower neighbor to G is G flat, and the lower neighbor to B is your B flat. You also have upper neighbors, and the upper neighbors are the notes a half step above each of your chord tones. So you have D flat to C, F to E, A flat to G, and C to B. And you can do this for every chord type, like a C dominant seven. You have your lower neighbors, and your upper neighbors. Same with C minor seven. You have lower and upper. So how do you use these upper and lower neighbors in your solo? Well, if you were soloing on the two, five, one, two, five, one in the key of C. You can use any notes of your C major scale over your two, five, one. Except you can add these upper and lower neighbors in between the right notes in your right hand. Okay, so if, as an example, let's start with lower neighbors. How can I use some lower neighbors to get me to each of the chord tones on my D minor seven? Well, I could play a line like this. Did you see that? Lower neighbor to my chord tone. And then on the G chord, I could do something like this. Okay, that's the C scale. Lower neighbor to the chord tone, that's the B. Walking it down. And then on the C chord, I could do this. Okay, walking lower neighbor into the G, that's the fifth. And I end my line on the C. Okay, that's how lower neighbors work. You can also use upper neighbors to your chord tones. So I could play a line like this. I'm taking my C scale, upper neighbor to the chord tone, and then on the G, upper neighbor to the chord tone, and then we have, now to the C, upper neighbor to G, and, upper neighbor to C. Finally, you can mix your lower and upper neighbors and do something like this. So I'm going lower neighbor, upper neighbor to D. It's like a little surround. And then on the G, lower neighbor, upper neighbor to G, outlining the chord. And then I have, just outlining the chord, upper neighbor to the chord tone, and then I'm gonna go upper neighbor, lower neighbor to the G. 
Now I recommend that you practice improvising for five to 10 minutes per day and a great goal tempo is 120 BPM and I encourage you to focus on one key per month. So as you're building out these lines and improvising using upper and lower neighbors, focus on the key of C major for one month and then in the next month, work on a new key. And at the end of 12 months, you will have practiced soloing in all 12 keys. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on soloing with upper and lower neighbors, we have a great full length course on this exact topic called 251 Soloing with Upper and Lower Neighbors. I'll put a link to that below. All right, if you wanna improvise at the advanced level, then you really wanna practice improvising with multiple scales. And if you use multiple scales when you're improvising, it might sound something like this. So how was I able to do that? Well, I was using multiple scales when I was just improvising. And so it made my improvisation sound a lot more interesting because you were hearing all of these different colors combined. So the way that I recommend that you do this is to solo on the turnaround chord progression. And the turnaround progression in the key of C can start on different chords, but one way to do it is to start on your two chord, your D minor seven, and then go to a G seven, your five chord, and then your one chord, which is C, and then your six chord, which is an A7, and this turns you back around to the D minor seven chord. In the right hand, you're gonna use a different scale for each one of your chords. So on your D minor seven chord, your two chord, you're gonna use your D Dorian scale, so all white notes. On the five chord, on your G7, you're gonna use a really cool scale called your dominant diminished scale. And I taught you this scale earlier in this lesson, okay? On the one chord, you're gonna use the C Lydian scale. It's a beautiful scale you can use on major chords. And finally, on your A7 chord, you're going to use your A dominant diminished scale. And so what you want to do is practice making up little lines using each of these scales and combining the scales in an interesting way. So first I recommend that you practice improvising lines that come down the piano that combine your scales. Here's an example. So I'm starting with the notes of D Dorian. Okay. On the G, I'm using that G dominant diminished. And then on the C, I'm using C Lydian. And then I'm using A dominant diminished. You can also practice up lines like this. So I'm coming up D Dorian, a little lower neighbor to my B and I'm going G dominant diminished. Okay, now my C chord, and on the A, using A dominant diminished. Finally, I recommend that you practice improvising by combining your up lines and your down lines, and here's an example. So for this line, I'm using primarily triplets. I'm coming up D Dorian. Little lower neighbor to the B, and I'm using G dominant diminished. And then I'm gonna land on my C, a little triplet down the chord. And I'm gonna use C Lydian, okay, to my A. I'm just gonna outline the chord here. Kind of an A7 with a flat nine to the flat nine. 
Now I recommend that you practice improvising for five to 10 minutes per day and a good goal tempo is about 120 BPM. I do recommend that you focus on one key each month and when you feel good improvising in that key and at the full tempo, then in the next month move on to a new key and by the end of the year you will have practiced soloing in all 12 keys. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on mixing different skills when you're soloing, we have a really good course on this called our Jazz Ballad Soloing Challenge. I'll put a link to that below. Hey, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the lesson, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.